What if I told you that you could reduce your bomb by 80%, have the power programmability you need, and avoid board respins all with one simple, easy to use solution? And no, this is not some kind of I've got a bridge to sell you type situation. Keeping size, weight, power, and cost in check are design challenges that all of us have faced at one point or will face in the near future. But the solution for those issues might also help us manage our complex power needs, help us avoid respins, and lower our bomb at the same time. Let me introduce you to Active SIP's Configurable Intelligent Power Management Solutions. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Programmable power management can not only help us manage our power systems, but it can also have size, weight, and cost benefits as well. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Yael Coleman from Corvo and I examine the system-wide benefits of configurable power management solutions. We investigate the programmable features of the Active SIPs configurable intelligent power management solutions and review how these solutions can help you balance weight, size, power, and cost in your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Corvo. Hi, Yael. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Okay, so we're talking about Active SIP's configurable intelligent power management solutions today. But first, why do we need system power to be intelligent and what exactly does it provide us? Well, we use power on a minute-by-minute basis. A lot of us take power for granted, but as soon as we lose access to it, we realize how dependent we are on it. Every system needs power to operate. Today, we're going to talk about how we can better manage power usage in systems and how the built-in intelligence and configurability of the ActiveSIP's power management devices helps us control, monitor, optimize, and manage the power distribution and conversion in different systems. We will also discuss the challenges designers face as they work to optimize their designs and how power management ICs help meet those goals. Excellent. Now, Yael, you mentioned challenges. What are the biggest design challenges you're seeing these days? In this fast-moving world, gadgets and electronic devices play an essential role in our lives. Leading your life without the use of gadgets is next to impossible. Everything happens at a click of a button, helping you do your work, helping you manage your home, your security, and monitoring your health and fitness. Electronics devices have made our lives pleasurable and comfy, from climate control thermostats to storage, gaming, and AI-enhanced IoT devices. We live in a generation that uses electronics and technologies which enables us to perform our work with more ease and efficiency. Size is one of the biggest challenges in electronics devices. As these devices become more and more sophisticated, integrating all the required components become difficult. Engineers are looking for ways to optimize the size of the design, while consumers are looking for the increased functionality and looks. Size also affects the weight of the electronic devices. As you carry around your mobile devices like phone, laptop, game console, headphones, weight becomes significant to the user's experience. Being able to scale functionality while optimizing the weight of the device is an additional challenge. Power usage and efficiency are also important factors. As we scale functionality, products become more power hungry. Improving the efficiency and better managing power in the system translates to improved battery life and therefore better user experience. Size, weight, and power improvements of the design translates into cost savings. That makes sense. So Considering all of the challenges you just mentioned, I imagine that system power management architecture would play an important role here. Absolutely. Here is a traditional system level power tree. A power tree is a graphical representation of your system's power management architecture. The power tree illustrates the main supply power flow through a tree of power converters that convert the main power supply to the voltage and the current required to drive various loads. 
Based on the input voltage, the output voltage, and the desired current load, design engineers select the appropriate DC voltage regulators for their system design, buck, boost, buck boost, or LDOs. In this illustration, we see a system with five voltage rails, three bucks, and two LDOs. This system is using discrete DC to DC called point of load. In addition, the design must consider the dynamic environment of coordinated power supply sequencing and timing, generating power on reset, monitoring for faults, and responding appropriately to protect the system from power failure. In a complex system, or when the hardware designer needs a more complex power solution, using discrete components can be cost prohibitive. As the number of rails increase, the difficulty of designing a full solution using discrete devices increases significantly. Just adding voltage sequencing and output monitoring to a single rail can require two or more active devices in addition to the DC to DC converter or LDO regulator that is being monitored. Power management integrated circuits, PIMIX, integrate multiple voltage regulators and control circuits into a single chip. Today's PIMIX are flexible. By making firmware programming updates, the default values like output voltages and currents, up and down sequencing, and other parameters are all programmable. The PIMICs are also capable of low, medium, and high voltage power levels. They integrate many individual voltage rails in one IC, as well as several bucks, boost, buck boost, LDOs, and load switches to perform many functions. They have built-in sequencer, I2C communication, and general purpose IOs, which can be used to support functions like reset, power enable, enter and exit low power modes, LED driver, sequence external point of loads, and more. With their small size, high efficiency, and low power consumption, PIMIX are used in many small devices, such as wearables, hearables, and IoT devices. These tiny, high-performance PIMIX maximize system efficiency and performance while providing design flexibility and lowering the bill of material cost. One discrete point of load rail will usually need around 13 external components to perform different functions as feedback resistor divider, resistor and a switch for dynamic voltage scaling, resistor and switches for output discharge, resistor capacitor for power up and down sequencing, and pull up resistor for power good output. In comparison, a one PIMIC rail would need only three external components per buck, input cap, output cap, and a small inductor to perform same functions while maintaining configurability. That makes sense. Now, overall, what does this kind of power management solution buy me as an engineer versus a collection of discrete components? Comparing a 5 voltage rail discrete implementation to a 5 voltage rail power management implementation introduces a solution size reduction by 80%. The number of components on the boards are reduced from 57 components to just 14. The savings on the PCB size and the savings on the number of external components on the board translate into direct cost savings on the cost of the PCB, reduce cost of the parts placement, and contributes to the ease of sourcing the bill of material. Wow, that's a lot. Now, what kind of functions are we looking at when it comes to power management systems? PIMIX inherently reduce noise because their power components are integrated which results in smaller layout and smaller parasitic inductance. They can also optimize functions as the pulse waveform rise and fall times, switching frequency and duty cycle to generate various output voltages and minimize EMI while maximizing efficiency. A typical PIMIC integrates power sequencing to turn on and ramp up the voltages at startup and shut down at the correct order. It integrates DC to DC conversion, LDO regulation, load switches, and includes voltage programmability, monitoring and control, I2C interface, GPIOs, and other hardware to supply the complex power tree in a system. To conserve battery life, the PIMIC manages all the voltage functions. For example, it may initiate sleep mode when a certain application is not being used and manage the components that must remain on to support the other applications. PIMICs play an integral part in managing device low power states, turn on states, turn off states, and standby modes. Today's PIMICs are very flexible. They can function in many different applications using the same base PIMIC just by simply changing register settings or firmware. This capability increases their versatility and decreases manufacturer time to market. 
So we've talked about the size, weight, and cost benefits, but how do we configure the power management device? Active SIPS PIMIC product family and the Active SIPS programming dongle enable designers to configure the PIMIC multiple times, making the debug stage painless and accelerates time to market. Using the programming dongle, designers can now generate their own custom program samples on the spot in their lab multiple times till they reach the optimal settings. Each and every block inside the Active SIPS PIMIX has its own on-off controls and can be customized. PIMIX are then shipped factory pre-configured to the predefined desired settings. The Active SIPS PIMIX come with an easy to use graphic user interface. Designers can work on multiple projects using same base silicon, but with different configurations to cater to the different power tree needs of their product SKUs. Adding the hooks for the Active SIPS dongle on the end product PCB introduces an additional layer of simplicity, allowing designers to change the PIMIX settings on their board, making debug of the final design easier and faster. Let's look at the Active SIPS configuration options. Each end application will have a different power tree requirements, different output voltages and output currents, power up and down sequencing, the sequencing on and off delay time, different GPIO configuration, under and over voltage protections, and other settings at power up. Traditionally, designers would choose different components and a means to adjust external resistors to set voltages, control current limits, or change on off times for each power supply. Active SIPS PIMIX offer the same controls, just without replacing external components on the board. Modifications can be made via the press of a button using the Active SIPS GUI and the programming dongle. The use of multiple time programmable, MTP, and non-volatile technology enables the Active SIPS PIMIX to be programmed more than once. As you apply power to the system, the PIMIX will power up to meet the desired default settings. After system powers up, PIMIX can be reconfigured and optimized on the fly using an I2C interface. Firmware compatibility is an important aspect for modern electronics. Many applications today are battery powered. One way to lengthen battery life is by tweaking power sequences, adjusting low power mode behavior, lowering voltage and adjusting current supplies dynamically when they are lightly used. The Active SIPS PIMICs are firmware compatible for easy control and suitable for dynamic power management in electronics requiring several low power states. If you power cycle the system, the PIMIC will go back to its default settings. Let's look at the different type of active SIPS PIMICs for different end markets and discuss how they can help us manage the size, weight, power, and cost challenges while adding configurability and intelligence to the design. The ACT81460 low power PIMIC operates from 2.7 volts to 5.8 volts input voltage and includes a linear battery charger, four DC to DC converters with integrated FETs, three LDOs, and three load switches. Two of the DC to DC converters are step down buck regulators. One is a buck boost regulator, and the fourth is a high voltage step up boost regulator capable of providing up to 20 volts. Each regulator can be configured for a wide range of output voltages through its I2C interface. This PIMIC goes beyond simply providing a high level of integration. It also features configurable power sequencing combinations, startup timing, output voltage settings, fault monitoring, interrupt controls, and programmable GPIO option among its many features. The pre-configured factory default configuration settings can be further adjusted through the firmware via an I2C interface. The three load switches are an interesting additional feature. They allow a power rail to be switched on or off to create a power island for system loads that can be turned off. This minimizes power consumption when those loads are not needed. Further, each load switch can be incorporated into the PIMIX startup sequencing with programmable turn-on and turn-off delay times. The ACT81460 is also designed to handle hot plug events via a combination of the 20-volt input voltage blocking capability and inrush current control at startup. The ACT81460 consumes around 7 microamps battery standby current with 3 bucks, 3 LDOs, and 3 load switches turned on in a system with I2C active. It is packaged in a 3.3 by 3.3 millimeter wafer level chip scale package suitable for wearables, hearables, medical devices, and any applications powered by 1S battery. 
designers have the option to bypass the battery charger to support product SKUs without a battery charger. So what about 5-volt PMIX, one without a charger? Can we take a closer look at one of those solutions? The ACT88329 is an integrated active SIPS power management device. It accepts input voltage range from 2.7 volts up to 5.5 volt. It powers up a wide range of processors, including solid-state drive applications, video processors, FPGAs, wearable, peripherals, and microcontrollers. The core of the device includes three DC-to-DC step-down converters using integrated power FETs, two low dropout regulators, BUC-1 and LDO-1 can be configured as load switch. BUC-1 is a peak current mode fixed frequency DC-to-DC step-down converter that is optimized for output voltage close to the input voltage. BUC-2 and BUC-3 use an asynchronous constant on-time control architecture to optimize the low transient response with smaller output capacitors. All BUCs require only three small components to operate. The LDOs only require small ceramic capacitors. This device also includes a built-in sequencer, I2C interface, and seven GPIOs. The low external component count and high configurability significantly speeds time to market. Example of configurable options include output voltage, output current, startup time, slew rate, system level sequencing, switching frequency, multiple sleep modes, operating modes, and more. The ACT88329 PIMIC is available in a 2.6 mm by 2.2 mm WLCSP package and is offered also in package option for low-cost PTH boards under the part number ACT88321. The ACT88760 is a 13 voltage rails PIMIC with dual phase configuration option. It integrates a built-in sequencer, 10 GPIOs, 7 bucks, and 6 LDOs. It is capable of supply up to 25 amps combined current on all outputs together. It is highly flexible and can be reconfigured via I2C for multiple applications without the need for a PCB change. The output voltage can be adjusted in 5 millivolt steps or adjusted in 20 millivolt steps. Current limits can be adjusted to match with appropriate inductor sizes. A lowering of the current limit can reduce bomb costs by allowing use of inductors that are smaller and which have lower current rating. Likewise, higher current can be configured when necessary. Such configurability helps avoid last-minute board and bill of material changes. It also helps avoid last-minute component changes that can re-trigger a certification process. BUC 1 and 2 and BUC 3 and 4 have dual-phase option. A two-phase BUC regulator has several advantages. The ripple voltage and the dynamic transient response can be improved significantly. The two regulators that are combined in two-phase operations have staggered phases where one clock is 180 degrees out of phase with the other. This phasing effectively doubles the switching frequency and improves the dynamic transient response. The 10 GPIO pins are configurable and used for a variety of system functions. The ACT88760 is designed to work with a single lithium ion or lithium polymer battery with an input voltage from 2.6 volts up to 5.5 volts. Two LDOs are high PSRR with over 70 dB and can be used to power up PLLs. LDO 5 and 6 can be configured as load switches. The ACT88760 PIMIC is available in a 3.85 mm by 3.85 mm WLCSP. It powers a wide range of processors and mid-power applications like multimedia, AR, VR, video cameras, and AI processors. So other than a sequencer and different number of rails, what else can be integrated in a PMIC? Many products in the computing and storage market have built-in power loss protection capabilities. These devices provide backup storage power in the event of an input power failure. Without power loss protection, power loss could result in data loss or data corruption. For example, a write operation might be interrupted before the data is safely stored. A PIMIC power loss protection, PLP device, can store power and then supply this power to the output when input power is lost. The capacitors store energy during normal operation and deliver it to the system when the power loss occurs. This energy storage process is called supplement mode because the PLP device supplements the power to the system to allow it time to backup critical data and shut down in a controlled way. 
the boost circuit charges the storage capacitors to high voltage to minimize storage capacitor size. The integrated supplement buck converter regulates the storage voltage to a fixed output so the system can continue operating correctly. The ACT8510 PLP PIMIC has an integrated autonomous health monitoring circuit that frequently checks the storage capacitor's conditions to ensure safe operation. It also provides information that enables the host via I2C to estimate the capacitor's remaining life. It also implements a multi-channel A to D converter to help monitor the power system parameters, such as input power, storage capacitor, voltage, and die temperature. During startup, the ACT8510 limits the output voltage to minimize system level inrush currents. It also integrates the back-to-back E-fuse FETs to provide bidirectional input to output isolation. In addition to their use in SSDs, these PLP PIMICs are used in backup power, computing, hot plug devices, networking storage, and other applications where it is critical to detect an imminent power loss and write data to permanent storage before power is lost entirely. In this enterprise SSD architecture, we see an example of how two PIMICs can provide power loss protection, multiple power rails, sequence the PIMICs voltages, and sequence external point of load to provide a complete power solution to the system. Enterprise and data center SSDs are active most of the time. Preventing them from overheating relies on how effective the power management design is. With effective power management, a device can operate in a full performance mode by keeping a device temperature within the normal range. Balance between power, performance, and thermal conditions is critical for a driver liability. Improper power management can lead to data loss. So, Yael, you mentioned intelligence before. So, how does power management intelligence come into play here? As an example, in systems using gallium nitride PAs like radar phased array and satellite communication, a specific bias sequencing is required to power an RF PA and calibrate it prior to transmitting the RF. GAN devices are depletion mode FETs which need a negative gate voltage during operation. Therefore, a negative gate voltage must be applied before increasing the drain bias voltage to protect the device from damage. The procedure to follow is apply pinch of voltage to the gate, then apply the drain voltage before adjusting the gate voltage to achieve the optimal quiescent current of the PA. Different GAN PAs need different drain voltage levels at different power levels. They also need to be calibrated to reach optimal quiescent current at the drain for better performance. This is where ACT4100 power management device comes in. The ACT4100 drain bias regulator can operate from a wide input voltage range between 4.5 volts to 40 volts. The main buck can generate a regulated adjustable output voltage up to 24 volts at 4 amps in small steps of 12.5 millivolts, which means it is able to bias a variety of PAs with different drain voltage requirements. This device also integrates a precise current digital-to-analog converter, allowing the device to precisely detect the PA quiescent drain current. It also integrates the power MOSFETs to auxiliary voltage rails to power other functions on the board, and it is optimized to use small-size MLCC capacitors for a small-size design. It can sync to an internal clock or external clock and supports spread-spectrum operation. It has I2C communication to the host for additional on-the-fly control. The ACT4100 built-in intelligence allows for the system to auto-calibrate at power-up and provides aging compensation over time. This device comes with an active SIPS programming dongle and a GUI allowing designers to adjust the output drain voltage, quiescent and maximum drain current, PA device current and voltage protection, switching frequency, and other features to optimize GAN PA performance. So how would you use a power management device to auto-calibrate a GAN PA? A typical GAN RFPA datasheet defines the power-up and power-down sequencing procedure. It also defines the drain voltage, the quiescent drain current called IDQ for calibration point, and the maximum operating current, ID max. The ACT4100 configurability allows designers to program the default setting needed to power the target PA with the help of the active SIPS dongle and the GUI. 
designers can generate their own custom samples to bias different GAN PAs cues with different power requirements. The I2C interface enables the ACT4100 to communicate to the host when the quiescent drain current limit has been met and allows the host to record the negative gate voltage level before it instructs the ACT4100 to adjust the current limit for full operation mode. This procedure is the auto calibration process that takes place every time power is applied to the system, making the calibration process automated and painless. To summarize, the ACT4100 power management solution features high configurability, which allows it to bias multiple PA SKUs without changing the PCB design. It features auto calibration at power up, I2C communication, two auxiliary rails, and all in a small 5x5mm QFN package. Excellent. Well, Yael, can you recap your main points for me? Active SIP's configurable intelligent power management solutions provide you with the size, weight, power, and cost benefits combined with the intelligence to make your power solution optimized for your needs. The Active SIP's PIMIX are multi time programmable and can be configured multiple times without changing the PCB design, accelerating time to market. I am sure this presentation has triggered a lot of questions in your mind. So to learn more, I encourage you to access our different online resources about power management technology and products. Excellent. Well, Yael, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Corvo. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. If you can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.